Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Our fishing reel that we're going to be working on today is a Shakespeare Alpha number 035. This one was made in Korea, so that puts it in the mid to late 70s. Uh, it was probably made by a, uh, a contract manufacturer. Shakespeare wasn't making many of the spinning reels at that time. In fact, Shakespeare never really uh, made a lot of spinning reels. They, uh, well, they certainly didn't originate with them. They bought a company called Langley and uh, they started manufacturing the fishing reels, having Langley do it for them. Eventually they dropped the Langley name and just made it Shakespeare. And by the 1970s, they were outsourcing their reels, first to Japan and now to Korea here. And as part of pure fishing where they are today, uh, they're all made in China. So uh, I'm gonna say that this one is a 1970s, and it's a wonderful example of a very nicely made reel that's gonna last and last and last with proper maintenance. This has got that, that little click, you either love it or you hate it. If you fish really well, it annoys the other anglers because, well, you're catching fish and maybe they're not, but uh, that's the, that's the anti-reverse that's employed on this. You can turn it off, and when you turn it off, of course, you can backpedal the reel as well. So we're gonna show you how the reel was made. If you have one of these, you'll learn how to service it. And uh, we're going to give this one a second chance. This one came to me by a, a friend of mine who uh, sells reels at flea markets. And uh, he got a fellow that dropped a couple of them off. He's no longer fishing. He asked him if he wanted to, to buy a lot of reels from him. And uh, he purchased several. And uh, then he asked me to make sure that they're ready for resale. So that's what we're kind of doing here. Okay, we're going to take the star adjuster off. And we're going to take the spool off next. Uh, it's a little tight, but that's okay. A lot of dirt inside, and uh, we'll show you how to service that uh, spool towards the end of the video. Well, while I'm taking off the exterior pieces, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting videos. So today I'm working on a, a classic uh, freshwater spinning reel, and tomorrow, who knows? It might be a saltwater trolling reel, might be a lever drag reel, might be a bassin low low profile reel, etc. And uh, if you use that notification button, you'll see what I'm posting. And you can decide if that's one that you wanted to watch. Well, I just removed the cap on this uh, side because sometimes you're gonna find that there is a screw in there as opposed to a uh, just a dead end that uh, would accept the handle if you wanted to make this a right hand crank conversion. All you would simply do is unscrew the handle from this side, put it over there, and swap the nut cap out on that side. All right, so that tells me that this is a turn off or a screw in handle. I'm going to remove that. There's a little slot here that makes it a collapsible handle. So I'm going to use a little bit of penetrating oil just to keep that joint there clean and, uh, and working. And when I take them off, I put them into a parts tray. I use that to organize the pieces and parts that I take off of the reel. So when it comes time to reinstall, well, I know where they are. I also wear a protective glove on my hand. I do that to keep out the greases and dirt and the like that um, well, can just get on you. And in some cases, it's almost necessary. I just worked on a, a Berkeley reel, uh, and it was just totally grease packed inside. And well, the glove helped me keep a lot of that off. So here's something you don't see today. You got a metal case and threaded screws. Almost all of the cases today are graphite cases and they use a rough thread screw as opposed to a machined or a fine threaded screw. So that puts this reel somewhere in the 1970s. I would probably guess the later 1970s because Shakespeare, I believe, was first into Japan before it moved over to Korea with its offshore production. There's three screws on this one. When I take these off and put them into my parts tray, I put them into a corner of my parts tray, and I like to make sure that those screws are all the same size. If they weren't, if one was longer or shorter, then I would want to note the location of that. Okay, this side should come off now. It does, and we also have the gear that's kind of in the case, so let's pull that off. We'll show you the rest of this assembly. We have the gear and we have a crosswind arm. So this one's just got some light grease on it. If there's any issue with this reel, it's probably that it hasn't been serviced in a while. 
what grease is there has uh, coagulated, it just needs to be cleaned off and re-greased, and, um, or, and or evaporated. And evaporation happens a lot, particularly when these things are stored in hot places, like the hull of a boat, or uh, maybe in a closet in your, your house or something. And that will evaporate the greases. So I recommend that you service the reels on a regular basis. Most of the time that to me means that you service them annually, not because fishing reel repair folks are looking for something to do, but rather that the uh, you, you keep the greases fresh. All right, let's pull our axle shaft out. The, there's a little peg that holds your axle shaft down and helps with the oscillation. This should be a 12 millimeter nut. I have a little tool that's a deep socket. You're going to need a deep socket for this because that ridge on the rotor is too deep. And I just turned it to the left counterclockwise. It wasn't coming loose, so that may mean that this is a reverse screw, and it is. So this comes off by turning to the right hand side. Interestingly enough, I had a a Chrysler automobile probably around 1966. That was the first time I found that we uh, the use of reverse threads on them and it used to be on the axles uh, holding the wheels on you would have a situation where your axles would um, have different mounts. The one side had screws that, that tightened clockwise and the other side had screws that tightened counterclockwise. Kind of fun way to learn that when you're trying to change a tire and you were unaware that they they work that way. Okay, we're going to take the other screw off. This should be a collar holding the assembly in. Notice that you have two different pieces. You have a small uh, headed screw that goes opposite the handle mount, and you have the trip one, which is the broader or wider one that lines up directly with that. That's not too important. What would happen if you did that in reverse, if you put this on the outside, is your bail would trip in an awkward place. But I do believe it would continue to trip. It wouldn't stop the wheel from functioning. Okay, I want to make sure that our anti-reverse is in the off position. Pull that out. out and then we can pull the pinion gear from this side. Notice on this that you have a cup that goes underneath like that. Test the bearing. You can test the bearing in multiple ways. Turning it is the easiest. Just hold the inside and turn it. You can use a pliers. You can use a needle nose pliers or anything to, to stack the inside like this to hold the inside race as you turn it. And then if it's turning fine, just go ahead and make sure that you oil it. I oil them and uh, keep them refreshed. We want to clean the case now. There's just a little bit of dried grease on the case. Oil the bearing. And move that ratchet out of the way for a moment. Take a picture here because you want to know which way the tooth are going on the ratchet if you do remove it. And then let's use a hard brush to clean out the slots on that pinion gear. And we can re-grease. So what are we doing in the uh, servicing of this reel? What we do basically with all reels. We take the reel apart, we inspect the pieces and parts, we make sure that they're cleaned and then we, we grease and we lube, and of course, if there's any parts that are broken, you uh, you replace them. All right, this is your setup for the pinion gear, so that can go back in now. And again, the only way that's going in is to remove that burring and collar up top. You won't be able to do that 
without that. The collar goes next. The lubricated bearing goes on. Make sure that it seats all the way down. Like that. Go into your tray and get your collar for the tie down. There's two studs and there's two holes. Do you remember which ones go where? That's where a picture would help. We took the one that was the broader one. And we noticed that that one was towards the handle side. Just trying to get that started. I guess we'll use our old fast screwdriver for this. Somebody had asked me what this is. I believe this is a Klein tool. K L I. A-L-E-I-N and I think it says Vasco on it, maybe Vaco, V-A-C-O, K-23 or 24. Wanted for me to see that. Okay, take the other one, which is the, the lower profile screw that goes on this side. Tighten that down. Let's make sure that the other one is tight. That's not. It was. I have a tendency to do that when I use that screw slider. I, I tend not to uh, pull that all the way in because of the. I don't want to uh, separate those wings. All right. There's some dirt in the bottom of, these, of this rotor, so let's take care of that. A little bit of penetrating oil as a cleanup tool. Same on this side. There's a little bit of dirt on the inside here. So the penetrating oil acts as a degreaser. It also acts as kind of a little sticky catch-all for that. I'm going to put the oil onto the bale and work that through. Make sure that works fine. And then we can reinstall the rotor. Hold your rotor down at this point or firmly on the pinion gear. Grab the rotor. And remember this came off in a clockwise manner, so it's going back on in a counterclockwise. So turn it towards you rather than away from you. Take your deep socket. This is a Mitchell tool. I think we probably said that several times. Now you can give it a spin. Make sure that it's working fine. It is. Make sure you're tight enough. You don't want wobble in the rotor. Seems like I can just tighten that down a little bit more. Maybe. Almost caught myself there, tightening it the wrong way. All right. All right. Well, it takes pretty much takes the wobble out of it, and then you can reset your anti-reverse dog. Make sure that that works, and just a little bit of lubrication on there, a little bit of oil around there, will be fine. Here's our main gear. Next, we we've cleaned it, inspect the teeth to make sure that they're all uniform. Check the peaks of the teeth. Make sure that those are all. Nice and crisp. And then we'll go ahead and put some lubrication on these. I'm using Pen Precision Reel Grease. I recommend that you use fishing reel grease when you're servicing your reels. I have a big tub of this, a one pound container, but uh, you can get the grease and the oil online. I think the whole two ounces of each or something maybe and it's relatively inexpensive, maybe $10. All right, nice fine coating of grease onto the axle shaft after you've cleaned it. Look for the hole. And what you do next is you bring this down and in and through the pinion gear down to the base of the reel. There is no cross wind block on this. There is a stud that comes across to grab that. So just a little bit of grease onto the back where that's going to slide on the main gear is all that's needed. You can put a little bit onto the main gear itself where it's going to track. And align this pin with the hole in the axle shaft and then the hoop with the offset on the main gear. Just like that. Normally there's a uh, 
washer that goes there. It's on this side of the case. So we can, well, I think what we want to do is we want to clean that case. I'm going to use a rod and reel cleaner to do that before I put that on because it's always easier to clean it this way than afterwards. So this case is held on by just a, a little adhesive, this badge. And a lot of times when you're servicing it, it's just enough, that little set down on the bench is just enough to pop that badge off. If you pop it off, you have a couple of options. The, the two more popular ones would be to use uh, a crazy glue or an epoxy. And I've, I've had some people use the hot glues, but I don't think they stay hot enough long enough to uh, be effective. But if you've knocked it off, don't panic. You can put it back on. If you use the crazy, the crazy glues and epoxies, chances are it'll never fall off again, ever. I don't know if I can say the same with the hot glues that some folks try. All right, let's put the three screws back in. I don't recommend using a mechanical screwdriver for this activity. I do recommend turning it by hand. I do realize that there are some folks out there that have uh, a weak hand and need the assist. If you do that, don't tighten it down all the way. Leave it proud, which means leave it, oh, I don't know, an eighth or a sixteenth of an inch from finishing and turn that last bit by hand. That way you won't risk breaking the screws off or warping the case. I get a lot of reels in my shop that well, somebody didn't heed that advice, and they have a broken case, and they don't know how that happened. Well, I hear you. All right, got the handle back on. Let's go tighten that down. This has a little port for oil, so you can use a, an oiler and put a squeeze of oil in there. You can also hit it at the base with some penetrating oil. We'll set that aside, we'll come over and we'll service the spool. This spool has a little bit of dirt on the inside too. So I would say this reel wasn't abused. There's a little bit of dirt there that's going to happen. Uh, I would presume that this was a fresh water reel. There's not a lot of uh, corrosion or anything on the case that would be indicative of a salt water reel. And uh, we're going to just take a moment here to knock this little retention pin out. It's a spring. It's riding in a groove. I'm going to use a pick to move it out. And I got my finger on there because I don't want that to shoot. So it's a five-sided spring. You can see it right here. I'll lay that on my table for a moment. I'll use that pin to pull out the, the drag set. Looks like we have a uh, leather washer here. That's pretty much been, well, it seems to be stuck to the second washer there. So this has basically has a non-functioning drag. Everything is stuck together on it. So what you want to do is you want to do just what we did. We removed it. I'll show you how to, to make it functional again. And the first part starts with cleaning out the old dirt. So leather is a porous material. It generally uh, will dry out when left unattended. And the way to restore the washer is to, well, use some grease. You can use fishing wheel grease. This is Cal's Universal Drag Grease, but if you don't have it, don't run out and get it. This has two sides, so it has like, almost like a plastic or paper side on the one. It looks like plastic. Then we have two washers here. They've been holding some of the dirt from those. So let's use some steel wool to see if we can't buff that off. If you don't buff it off, it's going to dig into the to the drag washer, and your drag washer won't have that spin or that release that you need on it. That one's clean. You can see the dirt in that on here. Some of it is just tarnished. It's not going to come off. Some of it will buff off nicely, like what's happening with this one. get the other side. All right, that's going to make it as smooth as it can get. The grease is not to make it slip. The grease is to fill the pores of the leather and keep it from cracking. It's sort of like a baseball glove. You want to keep your baseball glove greased 
so that the leathers don't dry out. Same idea here. It's so only a four drag set. The first one then is the eared. That goes on top of the one that we just greased and put in. Then we have the second washer. Then we have the top washer. And now find the slot in the spool where this sets. Put one end in, hold it down so it doesn't shoot. And then with finger strength, you can generally put the rest of it in. Make sure it seats into the, the groove. This one just fell below the groove. That's okay. It's a retention clip. It's not going to do anything other than keep the washers from falling out when you remove the spool. And we can go ahead and put that back on now. Oh, just like I did with the other one. Let's grab that cloth that has that cleaner on it. Give it a little bit of a clean. The, the spool again tells you that it was likely fished in fresh water because there's no corrosion on the spool. Load that back in. One more piece to clean up with that cloth. That's to clean the little adjuster button. And this is the 035, so I'm not sure what that insignia is on top there. Is that the Alpha? I don't think so. All right, tighten it down. Make sure that the drag washers are holding. And then back it off. You don't want to press all that grease out. If you leave it tight like that, it's going to do just what we saw when we remove them. It's going to clamp them on and eventually the grease is going to dry and, and then you're not going to have an effective dry washer. Let's give it a test. There's that annoying click, 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 which everybody's going to love to hear that you've got some fish on the line. Let's make sure that our bale trips. That's it. That's how you take apart, service, clean, restore, and get ready to give the Shakespeare Alpha 035 a second chance. I hope you've enjoyed that. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all it is that you do to keep us safe. To everybody, thanks for watching. I appreciate that. If you are interested in this type of video, please again subscribe. If you do subscribe, again, use that notification button. I wish everybody good luck fishing. Make sure that your reels are serviced and ready to go so you don't lose that fish of a lifetime. And have a great time out on the water. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Thanks for watching.